Good afternoon and welcome to Bounce Back. My name is Leah Siegel and I am so excited to bring you an incredible guest today. You are in for a treat. Thank you to my producer, Rabbi Kevin Bemmel in Los Angeles. I come to you from Valencia, California, and we have a very special woman with us today. Her name is Suzanne Geimer, and you're gonna to get to hear her story. She has some pretty powerful things to share. Get out those notebooks because you're gonna learn a lot from her, a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience from many different fields, many different backgrounds. So I'm actually gonna let her share a little bit about her story. And I wanna thank you and welcome you, Suzanne, to our show today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in nursing? Let's start with nursing because I know there's much yeah. more we're gonna dive into today. But what made you decide to be in that field many years ago? Well, it's really kind of funny. I grew up in Augusta, Georgia, the oldest of seven. My mom woke me up uh, on a bright spring morning when we were on spring break and said, get up. You have an appointment at the Barrett School of Nursing. You're going to be a nurse. And I was like, I was like, what? Because uh, I really always wanted to sing and write songs and play music. So uh, she took me. They accepted me. And uh, I guess that was in the days when you do what your mama says, you know, you don't talk back, you don't say no. <laughs> but uh, she said, you need a profession to fall back on while you work on your music. So I ended up going to nursing school in Atlanta with two of my classmates. I cried constantly the first six months because, and I'd call my mom and say this is too hard you know they get you up early and uh, it was a lot of structure but um, around my after about six months I realized that hey this is pretty neat to be able to make people feel better but um, the time that I really really knew that I could I could kind of do the two things together, music uh, and nursing. It was Christmas Eve. I was on affiliation in uh, Cincinnati at the Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I had to work the evening shift, and I was very upset about that. It was Christmas. I was away from home. You know, why, why am I doing this again? And my assignment was uh, a little girl who was about two years old. She had hydrocephalus, which is huge swelling in her head. They told me she didn't talk. She didn't, she didn't respond to anybody. So I picked her up and uh, there was a large rocking chair with a good strong arm. So I put, I rested her head. I rocked back and forth and I started singing to her. Silent Night, you know, Christmas songs. And, and it's really hard to explain the feeling I got. She opened her eyes, looked up at me, and smiled. And that, that was when, that, that's what I got. And it was like, wow, that was my Christmas gift from that little girl. I always remember her on Christmas. And um, that's also when I saw the power of music to reach people. So that's what a strong incredible. memory for me. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone's ever asked you this, but do you know where she is today? Is she still with us today? You know, uh, I really, there's no way for me to know because it was so long ago, but I, she's with me. And uh, oh, sure. literally, really, every Christmas, every Christmas, I relived that because that was truly a gift. And um, hopefully she got better, but she was pretty sick. Right. Now, that paved the way for you to really think about doing what mm -hmm. you do well, but in, in different ways than most people do. You know, there's nurses and there are people yeah. that do musical healing, but you found a way to fuse them. You found a way to bring your skills, talents, passions, love 
into people's lives. Before we get into right. that detail, tell me about some disappointments that you've had in your nursing career. Well, one of my biggest ones that I think uh, was actually a blessing when, you know, it's, it's easy to be upset when you're in the middle of it, but uh, I was working as a nurse, my husband and I had moved to, we'd gotten married in Augusta, Georgia, and then we moved to Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. They had no hospital at the time that we moved there. And uh, when I met the doctor that ran the clinic there, and I told him I had been the CCU, coronary care intensive care supervisor at St. Joseph's Hospital in Augusta, he almost jumped across the desk at me and he offered to hire me, gave me a, a, a beeper. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether I was there or not, if they had a trauma or a patient that needed to be taken off the island, then they would call me so the doctor didn't have to leave. And uh, soon after that, they built a hospital and I, I was the day supervisor, then I became the director of nursing. And um, I did that for 10 years. Wow. Almost every year I would help the nurses put on a show. So I was always trying to entertain people. And so like at the hospital ball, we would put on a show for everybody and I would, we, it was a lot of fun. So uh, HCA, Hospital Corporation of America started managing the hospital. And I had been the director for 10 years and I loved my job. I loved helping the nurses grow and thrive. But uh, they decided they wanted one of their HCA nurses to be the director of nursing. So I was told that I was going to do, well, I, they really gave me a lateral move way down to the other end of the island at the clinic that I started at 10 years before that to help uh, start an urgent care center. And um, at the time, I was very, I was, it, was, it was a big loss for me. And I was reading the book that Lee Iacocca wrote about the time when Ford tried to get rid of him. And they finally moved him to like what he considered a warehouse and gave him an office and said, okay, you can stay, but you're gonna be here. So then he left, you know, I wasn't going to stay in a warehouse. And uh, so what I did, I got uh, some information about a parenting class that was going to be taught at Vanderbilt um, in Nashville. And so I said, you know, I'd like, they wanted me to do community outreach projects. So I said, I think you should send me to Nashville so I can learn this parenting program. And uh, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to bring my demo tape of songs that I wrote and performed with my brother's band and I'm going to see if somebody will listen like you need to have a lot more good sense you know you don't just walk into Nashville and get appointments and say hey will you listen to my tape <laughs> so uh one day I, um, I went everywhere I went to RCA I went everywhere and they said you have to have an appointment so at the end of the day I walked into ASCAP this beautiful girl, I'll never forget her. She had blonde hair and a pink dress and a big circular desk. And, a, and I said, you just don't, I said, I know you think I'm crazy, but I have a big decision to make. I've got to have somebody to listen to my music. Just tell, tell me if it's good or not. And I thought she's not gonna let me in. So she said, I'll be back in a minute. She went behind these big doors and she came out and said, John Briggs, we'll see you now. And I met the director of new, the person who signed all new people. And um, he liked it, but he said it was a little dated. He said, I want you to come back in a month. I'm going to introduce you to some people that can mentor you. I went home. I told Marty. He said, I want you to write your resignation tonight. Write your resignation and go try this because you'll never get a chance like this again. So I did, I resigned. <laughs> Everybody was kind of surprised, but, um, and the neat part about this story is I eventually met Mr. Lee Iacocca and, and Hilton Head, I can't remember where, but I, mean, I met him, incredible. I told him my little story. I told, he laughed, I said, you helped me so much. 
you know, and I said, I was not going to be in that warehouse down at the other end. So anyway, that was kind of cool that I, I was able to thank him. And it, it turned out to be a good move. First of all, when I read that you had met Lee Iacocca, I was floored because he's someone that once I started learning about leadership, I kept seeing reference to him and his stories um, and, and his entire career with the automobile industry and what he's had to endure and how he's come above and the controversies that came along with it and the movies that were written, the documentary, there's so much on him. And I was like, wait a minute, she got to... Mm -hmm not just fall in love with, a, you know, the idea of him, but then you got to meet him and share what he has taught you through his writings. I, I felt that was so, so powerful. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to ask about that. Thank um, you. Yeah. you. You're welcome. And I'm sure that you carry that with all the stories that you have collected along mm -hmm. the way, you know, from that little two-year-old on Christmas Eve to, to meeting him. And yes. I find that you were given so many gifts along the way. And I think mm -hmm. you're still collecting gifts as you touch people's lives. I mean, that's yeah. the beauty of giving is that yeah. it, you, we think <clears throat> the person that, you know, the recipient of that is what's, who's gaining it. But the truth is you're gaining so much too. And so, you know, oh, going back to, yeah. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. um, it's, it seems like so fulfilling. You, you found, the best of both worlds and created some pretty incredible things. And I know you're a mom too. And I know you set a, a, an extremely incredible example to, to how you raise, um, you know, at least I, I know from speaking to Kevin about one of your daughters who uh, follows in your footsteps. But yeah. when I think about nurses, you know, going back to that evening, we all meet people along the way that are having these night shifts on holidays. We meet people in different industries that have to work mm -hmm. when everyone else is home around the Thanksgiving table having turkey. There are people at Trader Joe's and there are people at the doctor's office and there are people all over. I wonder how many people see the world the way you do. Here's how I feel you see the world is what impact can I make in every given moment? Whose life can I touch and change at every given moment? And that's why you say yes to these things. You got a huge aha uh -huh yeah. moment where God is saying to you, you're going to get that smile from that two-year-old girl. You will know why you needed to be here this evening. And, and for your entire life, you have that memory. And I think that's so powerful. And more people need to learn how to say yes to moments that yeah. at the time might seem really like a hard situation, but you have something most people will never get. That's huge. Right. Mm -hmm. And you took a big leap. Now you're very lucky to have the support. It's of, like a certain, yeah. Go ahead. Very. Yeah. I just think, uh, I know when I was working, uh, just fa fast forward a little bit to, um, I, I thought I had arrived and then our daughter Kelly, um, at that time went through her, Teenage Rebellion. And so I was free. I, I had quit my job. Thing. I always tell people the most important job in the whole world is being a parent, period. If you fail at that, it's no good to, and nothing else works. Yeah. And I think it's very important. And especially even if I had anything to do over again, when I was the director of nursing, I, I always stayed stayed too late I, I you know I was always available to everybody but I didn't have the structure that I sh looking back and I've told Kelly this that I should have left work on time they could do without me for a little while and had a little more structure and I've shared that with a lot of nurses who have thanked me uh, many times because you have to just keep it you have to keep your priorities right. And it, it's very hard in today's world because a lot of people, they need to work. They, you know, it doesn't matter. You can be a working mom and you can still be a good mom, you know, because people that say working moms, you know, don't do get enough time with their kids. You can make that time. We're all different. Some of us have lots of things we want to do, but not to forget the most important yeah. job. I agree. And thanks for saying that. We have, I'm sure, a lot of moms listening in on this. And I think the same thing goes for dads. 
we can't underestimate the power of what impact they have at home too. Mm -hmm. um, and the overworking mm -hmm. or, or I don't want to say like workaholic syndrome type of overworking, but where mm -hmm. they put that unnecessary stress when really, what do kids really want? They want their parents, right? So that's a strong message to, to both yep. uh, yeah. men and women out there as well. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to pivot over to, you write this mm -hmm. resignation letter, you're, you're going full force, but you, you started an, a project, an organization in your own right. Tell us about the Special Angel Project. Well, one, one thing I noticed with my daughter, I couldn't get her to talk to me. She wouldn't, you know, I mean, you're in that stage. But the thing that I noticed, I would be working on a song when she came home from school. And I'd say, what do you think about this? You know, and she'd say, you know, I don't, I don't like that. You shouldn't, you know, you, those words are stupid or something. And I'd say, well, what, what would you do? So we ended up having fun working out songs and she really helped me with a lot of them and so that was kind of fun and then um we moved to california because i wanted to get uh all of us together in one place her brother was in the, going to school at M musicians institute in hollywood i wanted us all to be together so here we are in california we know no one and um kelly and i really started singing a lot together. And I saw a lady on TV that had a, a, a shelter for sex traffic teens. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just thought, how lucky am I that, you know, I, I didn't have to go through that. Like a lot of moms that worry about their kids or they get taken away or they run away and they think they're gonna have fun and they end up in a lot of trouble. But I called her and I said, my daughter and I sing together and I saw you on TV and we'd like to come sing for your kids and tell our story like she thought I was the meanest mom in the world and I couldn't, you know, I didn't like her friends. And so uh, she said, sure. And one thing that impressed me that we had to be fingerprinted and we were thoroughly checked out before we went in there. So we did our thing and we got, and it was over and we left. And, the two counselors that were there followed us to the door and said, when are you coming back? We've never seen the kids open up like this. Whoa. So I thought we were going for one time. So what happened is we worked with, it's a place called Children of the Night. It was a wonderful organization for 20, 25 years, you know, with, and the beauty of that place is we were able to see the miracles happen because the kids could stay there for a year. So we were able to see the, the magic of what happens, but they loved our music so much. Like they would ask, play that again. Or if a new person was there, they'd say, sing it for so-and-so. And another thing with them is they were very closed off if they were new because they're you can imagine the trauma they've had and they are afraid to trust anybody. But because we came back, we said we're coming back and we came back. And um, then they would slowly open up and talk to us. And then it just took wings. I was working with a doctor who said, you should apply for a grant from the Elton John AIDS Foundation. He was on their board. Wow. He said, it may take you a long time, but you're using music to talk to kids and teach them about changing high risk behavior. So a year later, we got a $5,000 grant. So that's how we started our program. Wow. I have you, so Ellen many John. questions. This, <laughs> this is incredible. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that mm -hmm. it's the type of music? Is it the words in your songs? What about your music is so powerful that it's helpful in that situation with troubled teens? What well, I think that, well, you know, teens can recognize BS right away. They see right through. If you're not sincere, if you're not real, they're going to get it. And so I think because we're very open and honest about maybe what we went through, or I always tell them the story behind a song. Um, and then I'll say, I want you to really listen. And when I finish, I want you to tell me what what uh, 
spoke to you? What line spoke to you in that song? So then I can go into talking about, that's right, you can stand on your own two feet. You don't have to have anybody tell you what, you know, if you don't, if you want to say no, you can say no. Um, there's a song I wrote called Don't Call Me, I'll Call You. Well, that gets oh. away from my way. And the line, they, the line they like the most is, I've got your number and I've changed mine. And so then we can talk about it. You know, so it's just, uh, and then I have such great musicians that work with us in LA. They, one night, a little girl said, I bet you don't know any queen. And I heard them say, what key, what key? And they, they played a queen song and then we were golden for the rest of the night. So you have to have really good musicians that can yeah. on the spot make, you know, they know everything. And, uh, and we don't, the only thing we don't do is rap. I mean, I really don't think I'd not yet. well doing rap song. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Well, but this is so fascinating. I mean, you're, you're taking mm -hmm. something that you're good at, that you enjoy, and you're making a difference in, in so many people's lives. And I'm sure it's healing for you, your, your, your family as well, taking part in this. Tell me how nursing has helped you in this arena? Well, it's really funny because nursing is a really tough job, especially now days. Yeah. And uh, I worked at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Uh, they gave me permission to, um, at, to say that in the book that Kelly and I wrote, but uh, Cedar sinai is a world-renowned hospital. People come there from all over the world. So in the 29 years that I worked there, I met people from everywhere. And you learn that whether, no matter what color we are, what language we speak, where we're from, we all worry about our mama. We, you know, we get scared, you know, if we're sick. We, we're all basically very much alike. And I always tell people working at Cedars is like working at the United Nations. Oh, yeah. It is an amazing opportunity. It, uh, I loved my job. And um, it, I was a radio nurse. So, you know, for 20 years answering the paramedic calls, we had to, we had to really be on top of that. And I was a certified ER nurse. And the, but the day came when I said to myself, self, Okay, you have nothing else to prove. You've done everything and you really want to expand Special Angel and you can't do it with two, all these plates in the air. So I decided I need to quit for now so that I can focus totally on expanding the Special Angel project because we've already proven that it works. And I had someone offer to give us a, pretty large donation to start a program in my hometown, Augusta, Georgia. So I just saw the opportunity. It was like a sign, another sign. It's scary. Uh, and I missed it. I miss, you know what I miss about nursing? I miss uh, helping the new nurses that are scared and, you know, don't know the ropes. I, and I miss uh, walking in the room with my uniform on saying, good morning, I'm Suzanne. I'm going to be your nurse today. It's just something that's so much a part of me. I really miss that, but I can do it in a better and bigger way if I can help more people through special language. Wow. I do want to share with you that, you know, <laughs> I've been in the hospital a few times, mainly to give birth, <laughs> uh, but with each birth, who was more important than my doctor who delivered the baby that was there, what, for the for the last hour of it? It was the nurses mm -hmm. and the nurses <laughs> afterwards that took care of me yeah. um, in, in after the birth. And so mm -hmm. I have a very special place in my heart for nurses. My sister-in-law's a nurse, her sister's a nurse. Wow. Um, my mother was a school nurse mm -hmm. and a camp nurse. <laughs> so nursing is- Wow, those are really smart people. <laughs> you gotta really be good to do that, keep all those kids happy. I know, people escape well, class to go. Know, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a big, um, problem nationwide now with nurses being uh, understaffed 
And um, so I still use my voice in a positive way to try to help help uh, them any way I can. I still talk to the people I worked with. I still I can write my former manager and say, I have I have a thought about this and he'll appreciate it. You know, I mean, I think that we need to be supportive of those people that are working in healthcare today because they got a really tough job. They don't have enough um, enough help. And the yeah. COVID, I didn't know that I was quitting. I quit right before the COVID happened. I did not know that was going to happen. But I just, that's when I quit. So anyway. Um, You'd be sharing a different story today, Suzanne, um, if, if you hadn't, mm -hmm. you know, but you were on a different journey. I have a, part, a business partner who's a nurse at UCLA and the stories that she shares with me oh. mm -hmm. is unreal. I mean, mm -hmm. the, we do not give enough credit yeah. to, to these men and women who are no. the front no. line no. Um, of COVID and the amount of hours that they put in and the risk yep. they're taking yeah. being around, you know, people that yes. can seriously get them yes. pretty sick. So, wow. And they, they take care of, a, there's a much higher acuity of patients now and there's much more responsibility. And so every chance I get, I have to give them a shout out. You did a good one. You did a good job at that. Tell me about on a daily basis, Thank what you. motivates you? What, what excites you most? Well, it's really funny because <laughs> my husband just said me. Well, then he, I have a great husband. Um, yes, and he's very, very supportive. Uh, we, we really, it's like, what I like to tell people is he can't carry a tune, but he carries the key to my heart. Oh, and he's heard our songs over and over and over. <laughs> so he's a pretty good guy. Well, he must In fact, be. he's very good. I, he started this whole thing when he yeah. told you to write your resignation letter. I mean, that's a man who sees something yeah. special in you. And he's saying, don't worry, it's going to work out. I got you. So you you do what mm -hmm. your heart needs to, to do. I mean, that that takes. Yeah, that was a big man. Yep, he's a pretty good guy. And um, I think the hard part right now is uh, with the COVID, still aftermath of the COVID, there's not a lot of places you can go in person. So we started a YouTube channel um, during the COVID with a, a, a nice, you know, Johnny Carson Foundation gave us a uh, grant money, the people in Beverly Hills, um, the Friars Charitable Foundation, they've really been very supportive over the years. A lot of people had to cut back during the COVID because they wanted to give their their money to the most needy for, for the problem. And um, <clears throat> I always say, like, when I came to Augusta, uh, back to Augusta, it's been a long time, and I can't just walk in and say, I'm back, everybody, you know, <laughs> donate to me. So I've been networking with uh, people that I can collaborate with, and I, we can add to their program and not make them feel like we're trying to take over or do something. But actually, we're doing something so unique that I don't think there's really anybody around that's doing what we're doing. Tell us. At the moment, so... We just have to, uh, it, it's funny because some people say, because it's like, yeah, but so you're singing songs for kids. Well, no, not really. We're sneaking up on, we're, you know, I'm using all of my nursing knowledge and background. Um, I worked in the chemical dependency unit for four years. I worked in psych. I worked in, I ha I've taken care of some really scary people, but I think I'm never, the, some of the nurses, they called me the psych whisperer. They said, why are you so good with these people? I, mm -hmm. Well, you treat them like a human being first. You don't act afraid of them. And you do have to have a good sense of, is this person hearing voices? Is he really in touch with reality? Do I, how far can I push? How far can I come? But I think a lot of that just comes from experience um, and my southern accent came in handy, you know, because I 
or they, they were like, where are you from? You know, so I just miss it. And I think that the, I can do more on the outside about some of these problems than I can on the inside. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking really big now. No, no, this is, good. I, I actually, I'm going to ask you a couple things that you probably did not know I'm going to ask you to do if you're okay with it. Mm -hmm. Share with us your biggest success, and it doesn't have to be recent, it may be recent, but thinking about bringing music to teens who are troubled, whether they're struggling with drugs and alcohol, um, mental illness, Tell us if you can, and you don't have to limit it to one powerful event, but maybe a, a success story where you can say, this is why I'm doing this now. I have so many of those thoughts, but I can think of one time um, we, we worked with the uh, probation camp. Uh, these were eight, 17, 18, 19 year old juveniles that are at camp. I think it was Camp Kilpatrick or Camp Miller out in the Malibu mountains. <clears throat> and they, they were serious offenders. And, you know, they, they, uh, they knew we were coming and it was me and two of my guys. And it was in the summertime and it was hot, so hot that they put us outside on the football field and all the guys walked out there. There was 119 guys sitting on, on a hill and we were down here and we had one little speaker and a little my microphone and the first thing I told them was I don't we don't need to know why you're here we're just here to have a good time but I will tell you I had a brother who made some mistakes in his teenage years and he ended up having to pay for them and so I never stopped loving him. I never turned my back on him. And I'm sure you have many people that feel the same. So that right away, let them know who I was. And then we, we had a great time and we even had them singing on some of the songs. And then when we finished, they gave us a standing ovation, okay? This was a really big deal. So when we left, the guy who was in charge, I'll never forget this man. He looked at me and he said, little lady, I got to tell you, when you walked in, I had some real misgivings about how this was going to go. And then he said, but you really won them over. And I just, oh, and we left a program evaluation for them to fill out. I said, they may not, we have a program evaluation that helps us to show how, why it works. And so I said, I don't know how many of them will fill it out, but if you can get them to do it and send it to me, well, they filled out every line. Wow. And uh, one of them wrote, one of them wrote, I thought it was really cool that a bunch of um, uh, rappers gave you a standing ovation. And um, some of them wrote, you made me think of my mom and, she, you know, how I disappointed her and I'm going to be better. And so I, mm -hmm. I really, really um, refer back to that every now and then, because sometimes you can think, am I doing, what am I doing here? You know, am I, is this working? Is this good? So I look back and my husband reminded me, <clears throat> we wrote, Kelly and I wrote a book. I'd be glad to send you one. Yeah. Um, about our experience. And um, in the book, we have a lot of quotes from the kids that we've worked with that, and we tell our story a little more in detail. And right, we wrote it was, I think 10 years ago. So we need to write it. We, we, we need to add some more chapters, but it's still very significant today. And uh, so I usually just give it away to people who look like they, need it you know or want it or wow. moms that have said stuff to me so that's pretty cool and and how much work would, do you get to do like one-on-one -on -one as opposed to group settings we don't really do one-on-one -on -one. I've had and I'm trying to figure this out now because I had a lady that uh, she must have heard about me in Augusta and somebody they texted me and said I'd like to get my daughter in your program and I thought, well, well, we don't have that kind of a program yet. 
but maybe that's like a, a little clue. I think there's a lot of kids that are having a lot of trouble. And also there's no place in Augusta for kids with uh, drug problems. There's, there's places further away, but there's nothing here. So I'm trying to think of a way we could either get families together, kids, I don't know, but it's kind of like, a, it'll keep, it'll keep, you know, on my brain. And then all of a sudden I'll say, oh, it's a sign. This is what I'm supposed to do. Well, so I there's too thought. many kids yeah. that are. No, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm thinking about different programs that exist, you know, for drug mm -hmm. and alcohol, you know, you have Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Totally. And so mm -hmm. part of that world is the giving back piece, right? You, you become a sponsor for someone else and you're helping them right. person who's dependent. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't help but thinking about your program and collecting little angels along the way who also want to do what you're doing for the sake that it helped them mm -hmm. through music, that they can learn how to, how to mm -hmm. really do that and provide that kind of healing for others through your music. I mean, what if you started your own organization for that purpose as well, where you become part of what you're doing? I don't know more than my daydream in this moment of how that would pan out, but think mm -hmm. about it. If, if we're talking about touching yeah. here, right? We can't leave it up to mm -hmm. two three people. We've got to be part of an army of people who they don't even have to right. be on key <laughs> or know how to play an instrument. Right. I mean, I, I'm assuming you play an instrument. It, I saw some photos, you're, you're playing guitar. Um, what, what other instruments do you play right. at your main um, instrument? That, the guitar, I taught myself how to play guitar when I was in nursing school. And, you know, when I would cry and want to quit, I'd put my feelings down on paper. And that's what I tell the kids, you know, you, all you have to do is put your feelings down. You'd be surprised at what you come up with because a good song, I look at it like we're sitting right here talking in the kitchen across the table. And I'm telling you what I'm upset about, mm -hmm. you know, or like uh, I had a friend who wrote to me. He was so upset. He had broken up with his significant other. And he said, I wish God would just send me a postcard and tell me when this is going to be over. Oh. And I wrote him back and I said, you have just gone and made me write a new country song. God, won't you send me a postcard? Float it on down to my backyard, you know, and it's all about, uh, we all have songs in us if we just pay attention. And so I really get these ideas from that. Wow. And we want to teach the kids. We have talked about teaching them how to write a song. Or maybe we could get a group together for the summer and then we end up writing the song and performing it for their parents or something. So do you sell your you music, like recordings of your music that people can play over and over again? Well, we have a um, Marty bought me this. This was our first CD. Kelly and I co-wrote some of these songs Sweet. and um, it, we have it on. CD baby. It should be on things. Spotify. How do we get it on Spotify? I do. I think we are on it, but I have to learn um, how to push it. Um, and I think um, the one reason I'm, I'm happy, like Kelly is going to start taking care of the West Coast and I'm taking care of the East Coast and I'm still going to go back and forth. But I think she has really great ideas. And if I can just get I think our main goal right now is we need to get a big, uh, I don't know what you call it, a, a donation to to build our organization. Like a fundraiser. Because have, have an event. Years, you know, yeah. you can so definitely we can hire have a fundraiser. More people to do. Mm -hmm. You could do a virtual fundraiser. Um, people do them mm -hmm. all day long. And you can perform. I went to a violin uh, type of event. These were violins that survived the Holocaust. They're called Violins of Hope. And it was during COVID Ooh. and everything was done on wow. Zoom and you can donate. It was pretty powerful. And then we were able to go see it live. Yeah. It was the most incredible wow. thing. Speaking mm -hmm. of instruments, the ukulele. Tell mm -hmm. me about, you have a program. Yeah, we have the 
Yeah, the LA, the LA Women in Music um, donated 12 ukuleles to us because we tried teaching guitar and the guitars are so big. And if you don't know how to play anything, you know, that's hard. So the ukulele only has four strings. It's smaller, it's easier to hold. So we did a lot of that with uh, Vista Del Mar in oh, I know that LA. Program. And um, it's funny, they're, they're a, that is a really great program. I can't say enough about that. Yeah. But they, it's funny because sometimes you'll get a group that really likes it and they want to continue it. And sometimes you'll get a group that they liked it, but then they want to do something different. So it's always a challenge to figure out. But, but we have them. We have 12 ukuleles. We have about three or four guitars. Daisy Rock gave us a guitar. So we, we kind of, they kind of come in and go out and, um, but the guys are really good with it. They, they teach them really easy. You, you can play a lot of songs with just a couple of chords. Yes, I know. My daughter took ukulele in high school. And then when we were in Hawaii last summer, we both took lessons together on her birthday. It was so much fun. I had never fun. played that. Yeah. So I got to play with her and she already knows how to play. But, you know, like you said, there's there's four strings. You learn a couple of chords mm -hmm. and then you put a song to it. Um, I think it's Taylor Swift has so yeah. many songs that sound really good when, you know, if you're singing them and you're holding a ukulele, you oh, look like a true. professional singer. Yes. She's, she's a good songwriter. Yeah. And the kids like her. Oh, I don't know any of her songs, but she, I mean, she, I know of them, but I can't sing them. <laughs> she should so, learn some of mine. I was saying, I would <laughs> love to hear some of yours. And, and speaking of bouncing back, because that's really what this show provides for our listeners, right. um, having setbacks, having challenges, how do we bounce <clears> back? <throat> I feel like you're constantly helping others bounce back through your music, through your kindness, through your song. Tell me about some of the setbacks you may have had recently. How do you feel the bouncing back or the recovery has come for you? Well, I think the one, yeah, that's what I want. I think the thing that has been the most frustrating is uh, wanting so badly to go and sing for these kids here and the COVID restrictions just held us back. So, um, and we have, we've met with uh, the Boys and Girls Club here. They're a, a great organization and there's some others. And um, it's just, simply waiting for everything to get back on track. So when I decided, I, I was really almost, you know how you, well, everybody has a day when you think, well, is this it? Am I not going to be able to do this? And you know what's going to happen. I can't stand not going places. Yeah. And so that's when we decided to work on the YouTube channel. And I got different musicians to tell their story and be on there. And um, so that really that really helped and I can use it in a lot of ways to show people this is what we do. But, um, and then I have a fantastic person uh, that helps us in Augusta that, that we met in uh, Las Vegas years ago. He is the lead singer for the Coasters. At, they were playing at the Sahara for 10 years, the Coasters, the Drifters and the Platters. Now, a lot of people haven't heard of them because that was a while back, but that music is still pretty popular. And he is a fantastic entertainer. And he drives up here, to, he drives two hours up here from Dublin, Georgia. And he goes with us everywhere. And we worked with the juvenile court after school program. Wow. And the kids loved him. And um, so I was very luckily, you know, connected. Every time I think, is this, is this, is this it? And then something else comes up that's good. That's so You have awesome. to be you have to be open to the signs and I wanted to read you I have keep this it's all worn and torn it's on my refrigerator and okay. it says the three simple rules three simple rules in life if you do not go after what you want you'll never have it if you do not ask the answer will always be no and number three if you do not step forward you'll always be in the same place so I have to read that every day. 
Those are so my refrigerator. Wow. <laughs> it's so true. And, you know, rule number two, I'm constantly having to tell myself, if you don't ask, you're just exactly where you are right now, not having that thing. So if you could be okay with that, then yeah. well, you don't need to open your mouth. But if you're curious, <laughs> if you could have the yes, what do you got to lose? Mm -hmm. You're already at the no. <laughs> That's really, really yeah. wow. And I, and I know that we have um, our producer, Kevin Bemmel, he's on your, he's chairman of the board. And um, I know that you guys have worked closely together and it's through him that I got to connect mm -hmm. with you. And tell me about wow. you yeah, looking for you. people to be part of, of your movement and um, how does that work? Well, mainly um, I've been looking for musicians and, um, but also uh, Kelly has a lot of good ideas and I want her to be able to explore it and uh, talk with Kevin about it. I think she has great ideas and, there was a point where she just kind of quit asking. She'd say, mom, I'm not going to tell you my ideas because you just don't want to change. You just want to do the same thing all the time. And I said, oh, let's see. Let me think about that. I didn't realize I was doing that. But um, it's really been good. And Kevin's probably a grin. He's nodding his head for me to be here away. And then for her to be able to develop her own magnificent ideas. She's a fantastic mother. She has twin boys. They're 13 now. She has a beautiful daughter, Allie, who is 20. And the thing about Allie, Allie, we carried her in her bait little carrier with us every time we went to Children of the Night. Allie grew up going everywhere with us. And now wow. she loves it. So now wow. I'm kind of jealous because Allie and Kelly are now talking together and talking about how so they're turning I'm looking like wow that was me and Kelly and that's Kelly and Allie and it's kind of like uh you have to be able to grow and have a succession uh, plan and and be able to let go letting go is very hard when you have one way of doing things but um for sure I'm working on it with Kevin's head <laughs> I, I'll tell you something about that because there's two sides to this one is yes having the uneasy feelings, right? Feeling replaced, feeling, hey, yeah. what if it changes too much and it you know, goes too yeah. far away from what I had in mind, right? Like you feel like disconnect, but yeah. there's another element yeah. which I'm thinking of is pride and joy and really mm -hmm. being proud of what you've done. I mean, Suzanne, to see your granddaughter <laughs> finding value in things that you created and saying yes mm -hmm. to pursuing, yes to continuing, yes, because here's what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm picturing her mm -hmm. speaking to a room and saying something like this, my oh, yeah. grandmother, my grandmother, mm -hmm. you're part of this. It's nowhere replacing you. Mm -hmm. It is a combination of three generations making a difference. And it is because mm -hmm. of you and your work and your dedication that it has now gone deeper into the roots of your family. Mm -hmm. And it's not stopping here. That's what's crazy. We don't know the life that this takes mm -hmm. on. The best is yet to come. And you've had some That's pretty really incredible nice moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I think Kevin's pretty smart. He's guiding us in the right direction and I have to be willing to take direction. <laughs> as long as I can show up and talk and sing a few songs, I don't, I can sing a few songs and let somebody else do all the work, but I just, uh, I know it's, it's not going to stop. I, and when I think about it, I just say, God, I know you're sending me somewhere and I'm ready. And I'm not going to ask why, I'm not going to ask when, <laughs> I'm just going to let it be, take one day at a time. Um, and that's a hard thing for people who get depressed. You cannot, I saw something lately, you don't concentrate so much on the beginning. If something bad happened back here, start from today and make it a great 
ending instead of just staying in the misery of woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, or what happened in your life a long time ago. Because you have to accept the things you cannot change. And that's one thing that's hard for people to do, but that's the way it works. You know what's so crazy? Oh, one of the nurses told me after a meeting, she said, what? No, no, no. Tell me about the nurse and then I'll share with you my thought. Oh, she said, she said, I really like that meeting. You know, you should have been a preacher. <laughs> You'd be a really good preacher. You're probably right. <laughs> and you can have your guitar there. I said, well, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think I am in a way, but anyway. You said something so, so cool. You said, you know, don't think of this. Um, you, you said, think back to the beginning and make today like the ending can be, you know, a sweet ending. I once heard something similar. And it, these are all just little tweaks that we can make mentally, right? We've got to get through the day. People struggle with depression. People struggle with anxiety. People struggle with, maybe you're not suffering with anxiety and depression, but you have your low days. You have your down days. We're human, right? It's a roller coaster. It's got right. highs and lows. But something I learned is, you know, we tend to think that where we are today, that this is where we are today. Like, the, like this is the end. But what if you looked at it like, wait, this is mm. the beginning. Like the end is not even right. nearly written. Mm -hmm. And so the beauty of the discovery of the curiosity of what's to come, mm -hmm. if we could stay excited about that, right? It doesn't have to be, oh, this right. is how it ended up. It's, oh my God, I wonder how <laughs> it's going to end up, right? Yeah. That's the beauty I of totally it. a movie that's not finished yet. It's a movie that if mm -hmm. you stay and watch it, you might really like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say one thing, but because this is really important. The very first guitar player that worked with me and Kelly in LA, Ron Finn, wow. he was a, he's just a great, and he, he, I think I paid him $25 each time we went. He is now the music supervisor, music director for uh, NCIS New Orleans. He has, he's just doing great. Whoa. I'm really proud of him. He's very, uh, uh, he's just a great guy. And he went with us when we were just little, you know, and brought his guitar That's and so cool. $25. I'm writing that down. I That's you know. really cool. Ron Finn. Ron Thank Finn, you, you know, Ron Finn. Could you imagine his yeah. mind? I'm getting yeah. 25 bucks and I'm <laughs> going with Suzanne and Kelly to play a song. I mean, yeah. imagine he thought that was yeah. his ending. Look at him now, because those are stepping yeah. stones yeah. And we wrote, to the greatness. That's true. And that's that, yeah. And we wrote some really good songs together too. And um, another one that was first with us was John Walmsley. He was one of the kids on the Waltons, which a lot of people are not familiar with because it was so long ago, but it's a great family show. Wow. And um, I don't know, like Todd Tatum, uh, Michael Monaghan, and um, Howie Anderson. These are great guys that have been studio musicians. They've played in big places. They've gone on tour. Uh, Boo Bernstein, Pedal Steel. Um, I can't, I'm going to leave somebody out, but just uh, so many people have helped me and us to grow. And wow. because they were such fine and wonderful musicians, they made us sound really good. That's so, so awesome. Anyway, I probably left somebody out. How about They're a song? Awesome. Suzanne, how do you feel about me putting you on the spot and singing us oh. a song? <laughs> Do we have time? Um, we have a couple minutes and then we're going to end with your beautiful voice. Well, one of them I'll say to the kids, I'll say, you know, I took care of this guy. He was coming off of crack cocaine. He didn't like our rules. He didn't like anything. He was leaving. He wasn't going to stay. He cussed everybody out. But every day I came back, he was still there, still there. So after about four or five days of that, I walked down the hall and he was sitting on the floor in the corner and I said, well, I'll be darn, you told me you were leaving. And he looked at me and he said, you didn't see me put my jacket on, did you? So 
write that down. And I, I wrote a song. And for the kids, I'll say, how many of you have ever run away from home? And they'll raise their hand. I'll say, well, what did you want to hear when you said you were leaving? Please don't go, right? Okay, so here's a little bit of don't believe I'm leaving until I put my jacket on. <laughs> when I told you I was leaving, did you ever stop to notice? I wasn't looking for my jacket. I wasn't packing up my clothes. I wasn't looking for my car keys because I didn't really want to go. And did you ever really listen to my voice as I was crying? I was looking for some loving. I wanted just to hear you say, oh, baby, baby, please don't leave me. Everything will be okay, so don't believe. I, I, I stopped. <laughs> oh, my God. You are so talented. I see the child. I, I see sorry. the kid. I see this family. I see it all. You are a really good storyteller. You're a good listener. You are bringing powerful mm -hmm. healing methods to teens and children around the world. This is incredible. And it's so true oh, okay. what you just shared. Um, the power mm -hmm. of saying, don't go, it's going to be okay. Um, sometimes the families mm -hmm. at their wits end, they don't even know they need to say that in their mind. They're just, there's overwhelm. There's a right. lot of overwhelm. Right. Wow. You are incredible. And I'm so grateful. Yeah, so I don't got believe I'm put my jacket on. No, that's unbelievable mean. you are thank so you talented. for having me in the time I have. here's uh, what we're gonna do in the well notes you should hear show, kelly and i together yes uh -huh. we have to have kelly on and in the notes of the show we're gonna put how people can <laughs> find you okay so all the ways in which they well, can find awesome. you we have that kevin has that so people can go okay. on and they can go to the youtube channel and they can see for themselves how to connect with you, how to find your songs, your music, Perfect. your organization, how to donate, et cetera. And if they, uh, if there's a mom out there that doesn't know what to do and just maybe our book would help, uh, we're happy to send the book. Amazing. They just have to, all I want is for them to read it and tell us what they think. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And thank Marty for us as well. Have a great day. said you're welcome. <laughs> oh, he hears us. Okay, Thank great. you so much for having me. You are welcome. Enjoy the rest of your, your uh, Thursday and have a great weekend. And thank you all for tuning in. Uh, you too. <laughs>